I thought I'd do a little bit of a, an update the game because so much has been happening and I've taken so many videos, I've got hours and hours of video to, to put together, I just haven't got time, there's not enough hours in the day, so I thought I'll just do a little update to tell you what's happening with my blaster. As you can see I've got the sides welded on, I've got all the base done, that's, that's all welded up now with a little channel in, I wasn't bothered about that, but when I got the... When I got the top, when they got the sides on, I had a, a change of design a little bit. Well, not too much. You see, this was this was another three inches taller. Inches, sorry, <laughs> but it was it was up here, and it was a health and safety uh, item that I was concerned about. Let me show you why. Okay. So, what was a health and safety concern? Well, it was too high, so if I want to put my beer on the top, it was too high and it could lead to spillage. That's bad. Could lead to a heart attack, that's even worse. So I, I cut it down a bit. No, not, not really. It was just so big, it was just unmanageable. But what, if you can see, I've marked here glass, glass. The original setup was tilted a little bit. And I thought, I'm going to have to stand like that, because I was working off the measurements they had. So the, 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 the datum point of this machine is here. That's where you put your arm holes. That's where my um, small sand blaster is, and that's really comfortable to use, except you're cricking over looking at that all the time. So I've learnt my lesson from that one. So I've made this, so if I'm standing here, I'm not, I'm not leaning over anything, and also because of the angle, I can see straight down to the bottom. So that was good. So what was the big problem? Uh, my, I have a sheet metal brake, a small one, and it's 36 inches, and I was full of bravado. I think, ah, oh, that'll fit you, no problem at all, be able to do it myself. Unfortunately, I realised that although the width is 36 inches, or 3 foot, I had two bolts set inside so I could clamp the the bending bar down and uh, that was set at 30 and this just wouldn't go in. So I took it down sheepishly <laughs> to the shop that bent this before and they said Mike we're gonna have to try and get it done before Friday and I said why? He says the machine's going for maintenance it's not bending correctly it has to be all recalibrated one of them digital funny about things uh, he said, we'll do our best, because it's not like mission critical. They make, uh, they make parts, CNC parts and stuff like this, and folded sheet metal. So they know what they're doing, but he said, we'll, we'll see what we can do for Friday, and they didn't call. So that might be held up for a month. So, I've got all the parts for it. I think I've got all the parts for it now. Um, I'm just short for hoses. Glass, I'll tell you about that in a minute because you'll laugh at that. Um, uh, for the base, I was, I was concerned about what to do for the base. I want to do, you can see I've got some bread baskets here. I'm going to put some angle pieces like I talked about. Put them like that so it's nice and strong all the way across. They, these are just cut offs to get some ideas. And then cut down the, I've got loads and loads of these bread baskets. Don't tell you where they got them from. But um, I'm going to cut these down and use these as a base. Uh, I want a plastic base so it doesn't scratch. Um, I was going to buy some um, like heavy duty plastic perforated sheep. But it was going to be like $300 for a sheep to go in there. That's a, uh, maybe not. So on that, if I want to get a smaller... Uh, like perforations, then I'll, I'll think of something later. I'll think of something. But oh, what's the... Why I'm laughing is that we had such a carry-on this week because I put an order into Britpark and got my glass and all the parts I needed to finish off the Malawi 110. The seals, as you saw last week, all my videos are jumbled up so I was doing the Alpine windows. And a box of ten windscreens, that was expensive, that was nearly a hundred kilos in shipping. The postman didn't bring that. So, 
I'll, I'll show you in a minute about uh, glass because I got Ludi to give me a hand and the Malawi one the owner wanted the rubber changing and the glass was um, wasn't cracked but it was sandblasted and by sandblasted I mean you normally glass is nice and clean and things like this but when you've been on dirt roads and like African roads and the vehicle in front of you is kicking stones and all sorts of stuff just little fine stones it just chips the glass but not in a way that it'll break it okay that's not too bad during the daytime but at night it's like stars when you've got an in oncoming car it's just like starry so he said well if you've got some screens put me one in so we've got all, the, all these here are tinted so that's going to be alright but I broke one putting it in with Ludi couldn't work it out the Malawi one went perfect it was just textbook it went we lifted it in pop pulled the screen round pop and this time we put it in with crown rust proof in there you go but when we came to do the 110 because the 110 had a slight little crack in the top and I promised the owner I'd change it well I'll show you what happened to the glass I hope this is going to come out right it cracked right in that corner I couldn't understand it because we, we, we could get the bottom in fine and then all of a sudden when we were trying to put it in it just cracked. We've got it on video at the moment. I was really upset about it but I didn't sort of lose my rag and throw things about because I mean what, could, what can you do? Let me go and put this back again. But all is not lost because I can get that glass now cut to size because the aperture is going to be 24 inches and I can squeeze 28 inches out of that glass and put a Land Rover glass in it. <laughs> Easy. So the glasses from the UK, the windscreens are pretty cheap. The problem is getting them here. <laughs> they use about $1,500 for that box. You know, 700, <laughs> 700 and something quid. Um, so yeah, that's going to be nice so I can make it. You know, like the Land Rover screens goes tilted like this. Well, I can just do a cut line in the glass, break that piece off and then round the corner so it matches and just drop it in here. So, not, not going to waste anything. Uh, oh, just looking at this. Oh, yeah, I want to show you something else that was good. You can see I've got a, a series of magnets here. Now, I, I'm sort of really reluctant with this project to buy stuff from China, but I've got no choice because you can't just get it. Anyway, we're all familiar with magnets for welding. They're usually red from China, and they're not all that good, these. These are made in the States probably from Chinese parts they stick like feces to a hairy blanket not only that and they were $16 each so they weren't all expensive some external ones so that when I come to put, uh, when I come to put the front on I can put one there one there and I can TIG this now because I've got all my TIG rods I want to carry on track the van then um, I, I just wanted some filler rods just in case I couldn't seam weld it so um, I've got them Good. What else has been going on? I'll tell you what, let's go while I'm thinking of what would be. Oh, wait, I know, I know, I've got it in my bloody pocket. <laughs> um, I had a nice uh, little gift from, from David, and he sent me this Zeus Engineers book, uh, a data reference book, and it's a really nice, handy thing to have because uh, it serves running up across to a computer. Uh, it's in metric, which is good for me, drill sizes all sorts of stuff and printed in the UK I couldn't believe it but most importantly for me because I thought oh Christ I'm late that's going to get <laughs> that's going to give that's going to be black in about two weeks time but they're all uh, white clean pages so thank you for that Dave I really appreciate that oh talking about shipping things are turning up in the UK even though I've already sent replacements out we're going to get that sorted out but I'm sorry about that oh <laughs> it's all happening I sold out of USB keys I've got another lot on order, but this time they're going to be even better. Um, I sold 200 last in 200 in 12 months, so that wasn't too bad. But um, the ones I've got now are not like the little pen, uh, like the pen drive type things. They're across, and they've got the USB-C uh, connector for, for modern Android phones, and the Apple is it Fire something? I don't know. I haven't got one, but it's got four connectors on it. 
it's the same capacity, 32 gigabytes, but I've, I've got bags of space on there so I can put more and more stuff on. So they'll, they'll be here in a few weeks' time. Pretty excited about that because they've got the logo on and everything. They'll look a lot better. And like I say, it gives you more options to plug into different um, uh, devices, really. Anyway, so that's that. So I think that's that. Let's go and have a look at these cars. I've had to switch cameras because it's uh, very windy and the other camera picks up a lot of noise. So I hope you can hear me. So there's the Malawi one. It, it looks a beautiful piece of glass. It's nice. But what I'm sort of going to focus in here is why we, why we didn't get cut glass. Why, why didn't we go down to a glass shop and just get a piece of laminate cut? Because uh, they won't have the DOT markings or any markings, international markings, to say this is like a safety glass. When they cut just straight glass, you know, just a piece of white glass, there's no markings on it and of course if you wanted tinted, if you wanted tinted that is, then it would be like a grey tint. They don't do the green tint like Land Rover, so that was the reason why. Well I've been looking around, I wanted to tell you about the fuel sender for the Malawi 110. If you can remember, uh, when I was installing, I did a video on it a few weeks ago, that, uh, did I? I can't remember, I've done so many bloody videos, I can't remember. But I'll show you what was happening with it, just as a refresh, I'll put that link in, I'll put that scene in here. No, I thought that something's gone wrong. But even worse than that, when I took the sender out, look at this, I'll come back in a bit and I'll show you like this. The sender was like that. <laughs> you know when you push it in and twist it to try and get it in? Look! <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's got an half assed o-ring there that just doesn't do anything. And you can see what was happening, the tube was turning. So I decided to get a new one. And I got a brick part one. <laughs> Unusual. Well it all came with the same order so I might as well do. Country of origin, book. That's good news. I thought, I didn't think they actually made them. Probably not come from China. But there's a significant difference. I was impressed. See here where the tube goes in, instead of just being a push fit, it's on a spline and it's glued in. And that's good. I really like that. Um, so I'm going to put that in this afternoon. And instead of putting a fitting on here, you know, like, um, like an olive, I'm just going to put a piece of uh, fuel hose and a hose clip, and that's it. That's all it's going to get. Because when you're under the, you know, you know, when you're under the wheel, it's trying to get that bloody thing in there, and uh, you can actually break these off so easy. They weren't too expensive, I don't think. I haven't even looked at me. <laughs> I haven't even looked at my bill yet. I, never do. I, just, I know I have to have stuff, so I have to buy it. But, um, yeah, it just shows that it's, it's a nice potted connector there. I mean, it doesn't look too difficult to make, really, but, um, you, know, you know. But it's just a simple, simple thing like that. It's, that really screws the job up. So we'll get around to fitting that today. I'm sure I've got something else to tell you. What the hell it was, though? Let me have a think. Right, so and I, I remember now what I was going to tell you. I was going to end this video earlier because it's been going on a bit. But I got a message from my cousin Alan uh, in the UK. And he's been tracing his family tree back. And he says, oh, just out of interest, I've traced uh, my grandfather's tree. Because his grandfather and my grandmother were brother and sister, you see. And my grandfather was Henry Robertson. So Robertson, obviously, he was Scottish. So we, we knew that they, they, they came from Scotland, put it like that. So he traced it back to like 1500 and something. I thought, oh, that's interesting. And we came to a name, Alexander Robertson or something like this. And then we, we kind of stuck. So then just started to Google that name because he was Earl of something or other. Wow, bugger me. It was really strange because, apart from being something different, which I never thought about doing, but Alan was looking for it, and I was looking for, for, for our, this, this path, and we ended up in, what was it, 890, right up in Caithness, right up in Scotland. Apparently, 
saw it come from bloody royalty. Duncan the First of Scotland. Now, what was it, why I'm saying about this, why it was interesting was, I think it was Duncan the First, I haven't got my notes here, but anyway, whoever it was, um, one of the little notes in one of these ancestry papers was the characters in Macbeth was based on Duncan the First. So there's a little feather in my cap. That's cheered me up. So when I get five minutes, we're going to have a look at my father's side and see if we can get that back a little bit further. But it's, isn't it amazing what you can do with a computer nowadays and a bit of cash? Anyway, I hope you like that. <laughs> we're off to work again. Going to get this Malawi one done. We'll see you next video. Bye. Thank you.